Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again, and this is Stew's News, a review of American High Speed Rail happenings over the last month. In this September 2024 episode, we'll take a look at what went down in August. Starting with California High Speed Rail and the biggest news of the month, the agency announced that their new CEO will be Ian Chowdhury. Chowdhury was a senior vice president of operations at HNTB, an infrastructure design, engineering, and construction services firm based in Kansas City. He has experience in both project and operations management. Chowdhury replaces Brian Kelly, who took the helm in 2018 and attempted to steer the project through major challenges like COVID, flooding, and severe lack of funding. Progress was steady, but very slow under Kelly. We'll see how Chowdhury does. There hasn't been a finance and audit committee meeting in three months, nor an open session of the board of directors since July. So much for transparency. All they left me is Central Valley data from May and June, but let's take a look at it. Capital outlay budget summary. They spent $380 million the last two months of the fiscal year to end up spending 96.6% of what was budgeted for the year. We'll get to why that isn't as great as it seems in a minute. Design build expenditures at $234 million for the two months. That's up, but there is no trend here throughout the year. Risk contingency drawdown okay in May, but crap in June. If you go by the six month average, they go over budget in a year. Nine month average, same in 11 months. Two month average, seven months, take your pick. Either way, it looks like they go over budget on the initial 119 miles again before the end of 2025. Average daily workers still over 1,500. Has that translated to results? Three structures completed, one mile of guideway in two months. Based on their press releases, this schedule should be about right through the present. Caltrain's new electric Stadler KISS train set started service on the newly electrified line between San Jose and San Francisco. Those train sets will be phased in gradually with diesel electrics phased out on that line by the end of September 2024. This was able to happen thanks in part to $700 million given to Caltrain by the California High Speed Rail Authority. That occurred because California High Speed Rail will eventually use this same corridor with some alterations if California High Speed Rail ever reaches San Jose. That's enough California High Speed Rail, let's see what's happening with Brightline West. $1 billion of private activity bond offerings have been secured through the states of Nevada and California. This is in addition to the $3.5 billion of private activity bonds previously approved by the federal government and the $3 billion FSP National Grant last year by the Federal Railroad Administration for a total of $7.5 billion in funding publicly identified. This compares to Brightline West's publicly estimated construction cost of $12 billion. Also mentioned is that Brightline West is currently working on securing $6 billion in project finance bank loans. Those use the project as collateral and rely on future cash flow for repayment. That would round out the project's construction financing. That is one of the stipulations of transferring that FSP national grant from the Nevada Department of Transportation to Brightline West. Back in January, we were looking for all of that to be wrapped up around now, so the clock is ticking. Another interesting tidbit from this article, they are anticipating an average one-way fare of $88. Going off of how Brightline Florida trains and fares are structured, that gives you an average one-way smart level ticket of roughly $70. Not, I repeat, not 400 for a round trip. Pre-construction activities are continuing in California with more geotechnical boring out in the desert north of Barstow. This includes plate load testing where they try to determine how much weight the soil in a given area can support. Nothing in Nevada, more evidence that may be wrapped up and in design. On the development front, Collier's announced it facilitated financing for acquisition of a 19-acre plot on Las Vegas Boulevard for, quote, a private buyer. 
That land is located a half mile from future Brightline West platforms and it's also right next to a boot barn. No word yet on what will be built there, but the zoning leaves a lot of options on the table. With that, we'll say adios to Brightline West and mosey on over to Texas. Let's start with Texas Central Railway. Texas Central once again running afoul of the locals, this time for not paying their taxes. 10 Texas counties are suing for $850,000. I was thinking Texas Central might get FSP national grant money this year, uh, so there goes a million of it. In Houston, Texas Central is having trouble with squatters at several properties it acquired that have now been languishing for years. Great publicity there, way to win the people over and get everyone on board. In an interesting side note, Texas Central Railroad was acquired by Fort Worth Western Railroad. Wait, what? Yeah, there are two different Texas Centrals. Ours is Railway, theirs is Railroad, for future reference. And now for some Dallas-Fort Worth HST news. The North Central Texas Council of Governments Regional Transportation Council approved $1.6 million for planning of the new route we discussed last month. The new plan is to advance both the old and new alignments to 30% design to keep the ball rolling on the NEPA process until Dallas finishes their economic impact study that threatened to grind things to a halt. Good news on that, at the Transportation Council meeting, Dallas officials indicated that study could be done by this October rather than March of next year as anticipated. Last month was a downer, things looking a little better this month. Moving on from Texas, there is interesting news coming out of the Chicago Hub Network and specifically Illinois High Speed Rail. The process for potential further improvement to Illinois' 110 mile per hour capable route between Chicago and St. Louis has begun. It's early days, but lots of options are on the table, including a greenfield route that would indicate the possibility of true high speed electric service. That could significantly shorten a trip that currently takes just under five hours to traverse 297 miles. This process will likely take a couple of years to come up with a solid plan. Don't expect any major revelations just yet, but the process is underway. Sounds like we might start hearing from Chicago Hub on a regular basis now, but let's move on to Acela and the NEC. This last month, Amtrak and NJ Transit have been working to address issues with catenary that have been causing outages and delays for months. Both entities have committed to and are undertaking extensive inspection of electrical systems between Trenton, New Jersey and the North River tunnels leading into New York City. This includes overhead wire systems as well as electrical substations. Some repair and upgrading has already taken place with more planned. In the longer term, NJ Transit is looking for FSP NEC grant money and Amtrak improvement projects in progress will include catenary renewal in an overall attempt to improve service along the Northeast Corridor in New Jersey. Last month, Amtrak announced that it has successfully taken over management of Union Station in Washington, D.C. through eminent domain litigation. This is one step in Amtrak's nearly $9 billion plan to upgrade and update that station. It might surprise you to learn that Amtrak doesn't own that station. They only own the platforms. The station ownership is complicated, but it's basically owned by the Department of Transportation. This sort of arrangement isn't unusual. Amtrak actually owns only a small percentage of the platforms and stations it stops at. Now let's take a look at the Amtrak numbers for the NEC. Keep in mind these numbers run two months behind and are from June. A solid month for Amtrak on the NEC, but down slightly month over month. Year over year, also less impressive than we've seen most of this fiscal year. NEC Regional once again the star, up 5% on revenue and 2.7% for operating earnings year over year. Acela was flat. Is this a sign Amtrak NEC growth is starting to cool? We'll need to give it a few months since Amtrak didn't have the hottest August last year. With that, we'll part the NEC and check in on the congressional front. 
California Republican Mike Garcia introduced H.R. 9308 to the House and it was referred to committee. This bill is titled, quote, to prohibit the use of federal funds in certain high-speed rail projects until such date as the Secretary of Transportation certifies to the appropriate committees of Congress the completion of at least one mile of rail or electromagnetic guideway of such projects and for other purposes. Congress is running smoothly as ever, so the actual text of the bill is still not available almost three weeks after introduction, but this bill is basically aimed at California high-speed rail. It's stupid and pointless grandstanding as California High Speed Rail has enough money on hand to lay a mile of track and is actually scheduled to start doing so. The bill also has little chance of becoming law anyway. Always good to know Congress is hard at work on frivolous crap. Good day, Congress. Now it's time for Stu's Boo Boos, where I go over everything I missed last month. Another milestone for your old pal, no boo boos last month. That brings your boo-boo finding gold star total to 13. Silver star error free months for me at four. At this pace, I'll catch up about the same time California high speed rail trains are running. As always, if you find a boo-boo in this presentation or something I missed, let me know in the comments. If it's a good one, you win a prize. Special thanks to the Lucid Group Discord channel for their assistance. If you'd like to join our Motley crew, check out the invite in the description. A reminder that super thanks are enabled for those that would like to contribute to the channel mission. That way, proceeds go to covering expenses for full-length Rancho to Las Vegas Brightline West construction updates, including aerial drone footage. The first one is currently paid for. As soon as construction starts, I'll head out there and put together a special project update with all the trimmings. Plenty more videos to come. Up next is the Federal South Central High Speed Rail Corridor. Due to the number of renders, I've decided to break that up into two parts. Look for San Antonio, Texas to Tulsa, Oklahoma via Fort Worth around September 2nd. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big beautiful freeway.